How did you get interested in your job? Well, it goes back to when I was a kid and my mum and dad were very keen on their garden and both of them keen on uh, introducing the right plants into the garden, but my dad particularly in looking after the wildlife. He used to look after butterflies and he would do as much as he could for them. So it meant choosing the right plants to have in the garden to give them somewhere to feed and also for the birds, uh, shrubs and things that had berries on that they would eat. But he chose them particularly for that reason. And uh, I became interested in the plants because they were interested. I used to love making mud pies. It was not very girl-like, but I, I loved doing it. And worms. Like a lot of people here, like looking for worms. Also, I tried to grow things like potatoes and that. And so that's where it all started. I had a, a, a funny old box, which I got from the greengrocers, which we put soil in. And then we planted some potatoes. And of course, being a bit impatient, I would dig them up before they'd done very much. <laughs> and birds, and feeding birds, always very fascinating. And just being outside, I find it so relaxing. You can be yourself. And you, and you never know what you're going to find. And every, every day I come to this project, something different turns up, whether it's plants or people. And that's part of the fun of it. But I wasn't just interested in pond life, I was interested in insects particularly. Yeah. But I was also interested in plants and I used to go bird watching. Right. I was in kind birds. of like basically all stuff that insects do, what they feed on. Yeah, I used to be fascinated by, um, by different sorts of insects and their behaviour. I learned how to identify different insects. An in insect is one that has three parts to it. It has a body, yeah, can anyone notice? The thorax, the middle bit, and the abdomen, three bits. And how many legs does an insect have? Uh, four, six, six, six normally. But spiders often have eight. The things like wood lice, they're not technically insects, but they're part of this larger group of animals that have all these segmented bodies. But looking at this will help you. Identify them, yeah? It's a guessing game. Oh, it's like a guessing game, isn't it, when you identify something? You have to have a bit of a guess and, and uh, then see if you can work out. Be a bit of a detective, a wildlife detective. Um, well, what we do, we just go and have a little walk round because if you're going to look for wildlife, that could be plants or animals, yeah? But we need to look at different habitats because it might be in a pond, might be in a hedge, it might be in the soil, it might be in the compost heap, it might be in the orchard. And this is an interesting uh, evening primrose plant and one of the animals comes to that and it's bats. Bats love to come to the flowers of these evening primroses. Don't they eat them? No, they don't eat them, they take the nectar, nice juicy stuff in the, in the middle there. That's what they're after. Where were you and what did you see? We found that here, here are the birch tree. Right, good, good, good. Where did you go? We went to the compost tree. And what did you find? At we the found a big worm. Oh, uh, right, yes. A newspaper. <laughs> a newspaper? <laughs> and um, we found most ants. Loads of ants. Ants. I saw an ant. An ant? Okay. <laughs> loads of leaves in it so like snails and slugs can uh, eat. Compost now, bin being another uh, habitat for animals, mainly slugs, yeah. snails, lots of little wood lice, lots of pill bugs, lots of, of uh, centipedes. Very good spot but we need compost heaps. We need the compost to keep the fertility in the soil. And if we didn't have the compost to put back on the garden, it's the broken down leaves and the broken down stems of plants and things. If we didn't have that to put back on the garden, we would lose a lot of the fertility. The plants that we want to grow, the beans and things like that, wouldn't grow so well. So the compost heap is very important. The animals that decay the leaves and things, they're important. And here's a, here's a lovely apple. 
It's absolutely rotten. That's on the way to being compost. So there's a big chain of activity going on and a food chain. You know, we're at the top of the food chain. We're eating lots of stuff, but we depend on lots of things underneath for our welfare, our benefit. There's lots and lots of life cycles in there. Wow. And, they, and here they haven't even got bees or wasps or slow worms or grass snakes. So there's even more. I mean, so that's a huge diversity. And so it's, it's a food source for all sorts of things. It's a cycle. And if we, if we were too tidy in the garden, we take away the ability of some of the, of the birds, for example, to search for things. If you, if you look at the chickens, for example, they scratch around, don't they? They're scratching things up. And we need to be like that in the garden, not too tidy. Give them a chance, the, the blackbirds and so on. You'll see them searching around in the leaves for something to eat. What uses are insects? Name one thing they do. They bite. <laughs> That's the downside uh, of this. There aren't many, but not many insects actually bite here. Very, very yeah. few actually. Spiders get rid of the like the horrible bugs and everything that goes on. All right. Well, what are the horrible bugs? I mean, what, are, what use are they? What use is um, a fly? So it's a blue bug. What use is that? Have you ever thought what, say, a blue bug eats? You know, it comes from a little maggot, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Comes and people, you know, fishermen use them to catch fish. Yeah. Well, those maggots, if an animal dies, say a, a fox or a mouse, if it wasn't for those maggots eating the bodies of the dead fox or dead mouse, mm -hmm. they'd just be lying around, wouldn't they? Rotten. Something mm -hmm. has to eat them. Otherwise, would be up to our knees in dead carcasses of various things. So all the, all these insects, they, they have their uses. Yeah. So we might use this book this morning, the one on bugs and insects. If we're going to make a bug hotel, uh, we might find something that we need, need to identify, so this book might come in handy. If we're building a hotel for a bug, what, what are we going to provide for a bug? What are we doing? Oh. Rooms. Rooms and a box. Places right. to like hide away. Places to hide away. Do you see that it's what the were stuff in the middle? What were the scientists you to describe what we're providing? A, a proper scientist. Something beginning with H. Habitat. With a habitat. Well done, Trin. Well done. So, what sort of habitat do bugs and insects like? What, what, where do they choose to live? Soil. They some some um, bugs like to live in like dark places, like where they can hide away. So dark places with soil, and what else would provide some dark places? Warm places. They might choose a warm dark place. They might choose grass to live in. Plant pots would be a good habitat. Remember, we've been lifting up plant pots, haven't we, to find out what's Bricks. burrowed underneath. Bricks, excellent. Like leaves. Leaves. <laughs> so we've got leaves, we've got grass, we've got flower pots, soil. I mean, the, the really good way of you know, trapping all the insects and bugs, because sometimes you can tidy up too much in a garden, and by having bug houses around the garden, you always know there's going to be a, a habitat for all the lovely creepy crawlies and mm. of insects that hibernate over the winter. But we still do try to leave logs around the garden, but we know we've always got those there. And, and they're, they're great fun to create because you can make them. I know, you want find creepy too. crawlies yeah. in my bathroom. And I, I've seen some that are very, very tall. People have used old reels that people tie wires around, really tall ones, be as tall as this room. But the, the insects, they don't, they don't mind probably, mm -hmm. but it's just your fun bit. We're going to do like the um, little ones, some cosy uh, things first on that bit.